This is WHEZ, Huntington, West Virginia. Once again, here's Fred Hall with Swing Thing. Variety is the spice of our music. Key 100 FM, now better than ever. As manager of WPBY, I feel obliged to let you know that the Reagan administration is asking for about a one-third budget cut for our national funding in the next year, and over 50% by 1985. The kind of things you write to us all the time. One of the things you could do is make a 20-cent investment in a letter to your congressman or senator. Important action will take place in Congress by early April, so time is of the essence. Talent from Ripley, West Virginia, is featured on New Faces, Saturday at 5.30 on WPBY-TV in Huntington, West Virginia. Good afternoon. Welcome to MU Report. I'm Devanna Ferris. Today we'll take a look at college freshmen and see how long they stay in college, some new requirements for high school students, and a cooking professor. This time each year, many high school seniors are thinking about their futures and the possibility of college in the fall. But many of those same students who opt for college in the fall are back home thinking by the next spring. Tim Miller is here to explain. It seems that attracting students to college isn't quite as difficult as keeping them there. A variety of reasons, from homesickness to financial problems, can cause many freshmen to end their college careers rather abruptly. Well, Cindy Martin and I tried to find out just why it is that so many students drop in just to drop out. College. For many young adults, the jump from high school to college is their first step away from the more familiar confines of home and family. But many who take that first step don't stay too long. Marshall University is no exception to this increasing trend of freshman dropouts. Research by a Marshall graduate student illustrates that nearly 800 students, mostly freshmen, left Marshall between September of 1979 and April of 1980. The Assistant Dean of Student Development, Steve Hensley, says that counselors at Marshall see all students who go through the university's withdrawal channels. So far this year, Hensley says he's talked to nearly 800 departing students, over half of whom were freshmen. Hensley says their reasons for leaving school are as varied as the students themselves. An inability to adjust to the campus is probably the primary reason. Now, it might be academic, that they're not accustomed to the uh, workload. It might be a matter of uh, inappropriate attendance to begin with. You know, some students are here because their parents expect them to be here or because their friends are here or because they couldn't find a job. So that, that is somewhat common also. Hensley says that most freshmen who pack up and leave do so within the first month of school. He attributes this to homesickness. The new home most freshmen face at college is a residence hall. To aid in this transition, each dorm floor has a resident advisor to whom students can bring their problems. John Papa is an RA in Twin Towers East, and he says he's heard a variety of reasons for leaving college. Maybe they're having roommate troubles, or uh, maybe they're just homesick or something like that. And I feel like that if they tell me that, that we could possibly help them here in the university. Because I hate to see somebody give up on an education, you know, for something we can help them with, like roommate trouble. Okay. Papa says when a student has a bigger problem or seeks further advice, he can refer them to campus counselors in many areas. Hensley says that whenever a withdrawing student comes to him, there's no coercion to stay at Marshall. Unless it's a matter that they... Uh that there's a campus service that exists that they might not know about. Say, for example, they, they have a financial problem and they need an, an emergency loan. You know, we do have an emergency loan program, and if students aren't aware of it, then we would make them aware of it. Uh, routinely, we might say five or six people per year through this kind of a process. Um, what we do attempt to do that might be more successful is to um, 
to have students leave the university with a positive feeling about Marshall University and about education in general. Some students who are determined to go don't see anyone in an official capacity. They just seek help from their friends. Freshman Kathy Webb says one of her friends left school last semester after only a short stay at Marshall. He wasn't finding instant gratification down here. He wanted something, he wanted a job where he was getting money all the time, and he decided to go back to the coal mines, and that's what he's doing now. But, and he gave it all up, but he, the sad thing about him was he's intelligent. He could have made it. He could have anything he wanted to be. He's working in the mines now. Hensley added that many students make the right choice when they leave college. He advised those both entering and leaving Marshall or any school to remember college is not for everyone. For MU Report, I'm Cindy Martin. Tim, does Marshall do anything to try and get freshmen ready for college before they actually come down for classes? Oh, yes, Devin. As a matter of fact, Marshall, like many other colleges, offer an orientation program in which time the students are allowed to come down here to the university and meet with their academic advisors and they can plan their schedule for the next semester, including classes and so forth. And they'll also get an opportunity to see the place they're going to be living for the next few years while they're in college. So this gives the students a good chance to come down and get their feet wet in the university atmosphere without being plunged in among thousands of students. Oh, it sounds like they should take advantage of that. High schools will be facing more budget problems because of a mandate passed by the State Board of Education. Renee Kaufman has details. For more information on the course, students can contact the speech department or Mr. Dare Zapolsky. For FM 88 News, I'm Justin Gibson. We'll have more local news when News 88 continues. The Pretenders, live in concert, recorded during their last U.S. tour. The Pretenders, a band that has been taking the U.S. into new realms of music. I'd like to close off the Rock Roll Interview Show with a very special song, and I'd like to thank you all for joining me today, and I hope you all join me next week when I'll have the Surf and Drag Show and be playing all surfing music and all hot rod songs and drag songs. So that's next week from uh, 11 to 1, and I'd like to thank Brad Wynn for his April Fool's Show today, which is quite interesting, quite new, the first annual. And right now, I'm going to leave you with a little song. I'd like to hope you have a good weekend. Have a good one. This is Broadway's best Sherry White with you, and uh, it's about 10 minutes now before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Despite her love for Lancelot, Guinevere remains faithful to Arthur and tries to help him make light of royalty's burdens with what do the simple folk do. The time is 9.30. This is BB News' Jeff Lane reporting. More than 65,000 people jammed Cleveland's Municipal Stadium today for an eight-hour rock concert. Violence erupted overnight as people gathered in the city for the concert. At least 75, 75 people had been arrested by the time the concert ended tonight. They've been taken in on charges ranging from robbery to disorderly conduct. One man was killed during a robbery last night. Police say a rash of robberies among the crowd con contributed to the violence. President Carter will meet with Pope John Paul at the White House when the Pontiff, vis Pontiff visits the United States this autumn. Carter told a gathering of out-of-town editors and news directors that he doesn't believe John Paul is coming to this country on a political mission, but instead will be concerned with religion, morals, and ethics. In West Virginia news, state police say an elderly Clarksburg woman has died after a traffic accident involving a Clarksburg City police cruiser. Trooper C.E. Davis of the Shenston State Police Detachment says 85-year-old Blanche C. Strether of Clarksburg died about three hours after the Friday evening accident. Davis says Mrs. Mrs. Struther was a passenger in a vehicle driven by her daughter, 66-year-old Mildred L. Struther of Lawsonburg in Harrison County. BB weather, showers and thunderstorms tonight, tapering off tomorrow. Rain may be locally heavy at times with some small stream and urban flooding. Probability of rain, 80% tonight, 40% tomorrow, and 20% tomorrow night. It's 75 degrees in downtown Madison, that's 23 degrees Celsius. This is Lead Me On, Maxine Nightingale. Shake it and make it to the Midnight Sun Lounge at Foster tonight. Enjoy the rock and country sounds of Tequila Sunrise. That's tonight at the Midnight Sun Lounge, Foster, West Virginia. Music by Tequila Sunrise.